Yo, what up? So, Atlas is changing 3.16. It's uh, gonna be faster to progress now. Uh, but as a result of them removing so many regions uh, and watchstones, there's gonna be a bit of an awkward uh, thing about the leapfrog stat, which people refer to as when you put a watchstone in a region or multiple watchstones, and then you run all of the conquerors. Uh, from that region until you have run all of them for the watchstones and that is because previously you could always run four of the conquerors Every single time so previously you had the corner regions, right? And then after you've done those you put one watchstone in one of the middle ones and then you run four conquerors there now You're gonna be obtaining the first four watchstones from these and after that each of them have only three watchstones left, right? But once we put the first Watson say into Hamlet, we can only do three of the fights here, and then we have to finish off the last one in another region. So that's gonna make it slightly awkward, and that's why I'm making this video. And I'm gonna try to keep it as simplified as possible. Um, I'm not gonna go into nitty gritty like nitty gritty details on explaining how Atlas systems or anything like work. And if you can't keep up. I will include this space pin, which I'm gonna be basically reading through anyways in this video, in the uh, in the description and comments. And yeah, I guess let's go into it. So, a couple notes first before we actually start talking about those. The first thing is whenever and whenever you go you spawn Maven, the you should immediately prioritize completing the first Maven invitation in the region when it spawns because you cannot start doing the Maven invitations in other regions before you have done the first one. Like the the Atlas, um, Atlas will like, when you put a map here, oh, I mean a hideout, when you put the map in a hideout, it will like tell you that Maven doesn't have interest in this region or something like that. When you put it like here, there's like a text here saying that you can't get the Maven invitation. Uh, and uh, here's, you know that you have Maven in your Atlas, when you have like this bar uh, above one of the watchtowers, uh, except with three, and most likely it's gonna have the first one already filled in because that's when you got the first invitation. You somehow miss it. Uh, uh, this first maven thing will most likely gonna be occurring when you're doing the first what uh, the one watchstone conquer fights, which I'm gonna be recommending in uh, kind of can, uh, but it can spawn anywhere. Especially if you do Zana missions. When it's so when you do Zana mission, Zana gives you say a T6 map, uh, from the T4 map, it could spawn the the uh, Maven invitation uh, quest there. Uh, also, note you don't have to follow my my recommendations on on what order you do this. You could swap these orders around as much as you like. Uh, I'm gonna focus in on how I would recommend you to do this if your goal is to get to 16 watchstones and to zeros with like as little as possible with problems on like sustaining and dropping maps. So my Maven passives, mainly Valdos Rest and Lira Arthane are the two important ones. So you wanna do like the higher watchstone fights in these because of that. Yeah. Next up. Uh, when you get uh, white the Arizona missions, you should do them really early on. Basically, uh, you do a Zana mission, or when you open a map with a Zana mission, it will reset the, the Zana shop. I will show you quickly. So we have Zana here, we have some random ass maps here. I'll put a map in, I'll do a Zana. I don't even need to go into the map. It reset. These are now different maps. Uh, so, whenever, whenever you do a Zana mission, uh, remember to check the shop. Uh, and she will give you a lot of maps, especially early on, that you haven't completed yet, and most likely gonna like kickstart your Atlas progression uh, very nicely and giving you a lot of extra bonus or not really much investment. Uh, and then once you get to yellow tier Sana missions, like once you start obtaining those yellow tier Sana missions, uh, I would recommend saving those for 
when you run T9 and T10 maps, because then you can get T11s and uh, potentially even T12s on the T10 maps. Uh, and yeah, like I said, before you open a Sana mission, actually I said after you open a Sana mission, check the shop. But you should also check the Sana shop before you open a new map with a mission, because sometimes there is a pretty unknown slash convoluted points in your Atlas progression where the Sana shop might refresh or some of the maps might change. So that's why you should always double check the Sana shop before you open a new one. Uh, okay, all your maps. Yes, the first map you get, if you find a T1 map while you're farming, I don't know, BA, Blood Aqueduct, put it in, alk it, if you can, and if you have alks. It's gonna help a lot, do it. Uh, and then here comes the, uh, here comes the uh, Maven Passives, so in Valdos, which is gonna be our two watchstone, uh, main two watchstone, uh, you want to put the nodes in the Harbinger nodes. Harbingers are really nice for just like, they spawn decent amount of rares, uh, they give you Horizon Orbs, which are really good at getting uh, maps, uh, like changing maps for different maps that you, you don't already have. Uh, I also have a a nice little like uh, info dump spreadsheet. I'm going to update these as well. But for example, here's a list of all maps by tier. For example, let's say that you dropped a T10 map somewhere. Uh, you can immediately turn it into a Crimson Township with a one Horizon Orb, because it's the only natural. Uh, so the earliest time this map can spawn is a T10. That's the Horizons. And there's going to be a list of all maps, what there they are. And then there's some useful useful uh, links going to be here. For example, this guide is going to be here. It's already there as a base pin, but I'll have the video there as well. So yeah. You're doing Valdos for the Harvey stuff, and then you're doing Lyra for the Invasion nodes. The Invasion nodes are absolutely insane at giving you like T13 plus maps if you're running them at T10 plus uh, from experience. They also give you six links and whatnot. Um, if you wanted to farm for currency, you might want to do this earlier, but for the sake of this progression, I would recommend uh, this to be your three watchstone region. And obviously you can read the card later. Uh, and then I would honestly recommend, especially now with the new uh, Atlas progression, to literally do this. Go to options, go to it is UI, and then enable quest tracking. That that will most likely be more helpful than going to a streamer asking why you're stuck in the Atlas. So this will literally tell you what you need to do. It even tells you the zone. It tells you with how many watchstones you need to have. Enable this, especially if you're not 100% sure uh, on what you're doing. Do it. I'm probably gonna run with a quest tracker on. There's no shaming that, okay? No quest track shame here. Uh, and now we get to the actual quiet. So, the very, very, very first goal when you get there here into your Atlas is you wanna complete any tier 3 map, at least based on previous experience. Uh, because that is when Zana comes uh, to your atlas and tells you that you're a fucking idiot uh, for, you know, entering the atlas. And that is when you gain access to Zana and her shop and Zana missions. You will not spawn any Zana missions until Zana uh, is in your hideout. So that is extremely important. That is why... If you, when you run your first T1 map, if it drops a T2, run that T2 map. If you dropped a T3 out of that 3 map, run that immediately. Do not go run any of the T1s or T2s if you have access to T3 immediately. It is going to be so good. Trust me. Uh, as I said, you can start sending Zana missions, you get the access to shop, and she will usually sell you a bunch of maps that you don't have yet. It's going to be very, very good. Also, Actually, before you run your first map, buy every single map from Kirak, uh, if you have the chance of that. Okay. And then, uh, after 
after the first Sana is spawned, like Sana, we have found Sana, that is when the Conqueror quest line begins. Now, we don't know if you can spawn it on a T1 or T2 map. Uh, in the current game, you need to run a T, uh, T3. But uh, I would recommend you start running maps in Klenach Cairn after you have Zana. So, because we are trying to get um, the first uh, spawn there. And then obviously you kill the, the Baron who spawns there, and then you put the Watchstone immediately into the, uh, the Klenach Cairn. So at this point you have Klenach with one Watchstone, nothing in the others. Good. Uh, and at this point onwards, whenever you get new maps, uh, I would just recommend complete the map for the bonus, with the exception that if you somehow uh, get a very high tier map from Zana, uh, from her shop, like say T10 uh, Crimson Township, while you're still running like say T5 and 6 maps, I would say wait with it until you, you can use this T10 Crimson Township in one of the higher Watchstone count uh, uh, like the progressions. So for example, Crimson Township currently is here, and it's a tier 10 map at its lowest, which means that you can use that as a two watchstone a map to progress the influence in Waldo's Rest. So basically don't run like super high tier maps just for the sake of bonus. This is more important for the lower tier maps. So don't wait on those. I would say, I would just recommend you running those. And then uh, you start doing the other regions for zero, the zero watchstones to get, get more of them. Uh, while gathering maps for the one watchstone clanacare. Obviously you can do the one watchstone clan fights while you're doing the uh, zero watchstones if you get the maps for them. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but once you have a total of three watchstones, uh, put those two new watchstones into Hamlet, so the top left. So here, actually I could do like this. So you do there and you do that. And then these are these are currently zero. Okay, that's what your uh, Atlas should look like right now. And then you finish the zero watchstone fights if you're still missing. Uh, and then you start doing the the kind of one watchstone progress. Uh, and at this point, you're probably going to have at least one extra watchstone. Don't put it anywhere. Uh, when you get fifth watchstone, so that's probably one after that, uh, you're going to put those two straight into our good friend Valdos here. And the reason for that is that you want to start gathering maps for this. Uh, and it also gives you one extra awakening bonus. Awakening bonus is now every two maps. So when we had only three watchstones, we only we have awakening level one. Now we have level two. And that is going to increase uh, the chance of the map boss, when you kill a map boss in a map, to drop a connected map to the map that you were in, which is extremely valuable. Uh, so you're trying to put watchstones in to get the watchstone at uh, the awakening level without hampering your progression. So you're going to need to run two watchstone fights here anyways. So might as well start putting them there. Uh, and then again, there's that setup right now. Once you get the sixth watchstone, you put it straight in the Waldos. So the next one. Uh, and now we are suddenly three here. And again, awakening level goes up. This is not going to really hamper your map drops here or your map drops here. Uh, and you can start potentially getting a three one watch zones here for future uh, the concursion rotations. So it's pretty nice. And then after you finish the one watch zone finds in Klenach, you have now a total of seven stones. Uh, but now we get to the point where we only completed three one watchstone fights in that region. So we still have to do one watchstone fight somewhere else. Uh, what's going to happen is we are going to complete it in the hamlet. However, if you do have the two watchstone maps here, you can run all of the three uh, rotations here that we need for watchstones 
with the two Watchstone tier maps. Uh, that means that you're basically benefiting from a higher tier map for the free uh, influence packs, which is kind of nice. Obviously, one of these fights, whatever is the last one Watchstone Conqueror that you didn't yet do, is going to be lower level when you actually get to fight it, but that, that doesn't matter. Uh, so if you can do that, that's nice. Also, if you ever run out of maps, uh, you can just keep running. You should probably have some leftover maps, you can just keep running those. Uh, and obviously, remember to check your Sanos. And if you're playing, if you're in Trade League, just buy maps. There's a, there's a very high chance that if you're watching this video, somebody in Trade League is already pa way, way, way past you, and they can sell maps. It's definitely worth the investment to buy maps to get the stuff done faster. Uh, yeah, here's mentioning about that you can still run the two Watchstone tier maps for the one Watchstone Conqueror fight. And yeah, here's the... After, after this, after you are at this point, you're gonna take the... You're gonna take the uh, Watchstone out from here. And the reason for that uh, is very simply, you are removing T6 and T7 maps, most likely, with this. And when you're running the T8 plus maps here, every time a T7 or T6 map tries to drop, but it can't because it doesn't exist your Atlas, that is now added as a hidden equity, which just accumulate, uh, accumulates like a number, and after a certain point, it will literally just drop you the lowest tier map that you can, which for you is a T8 map in here. Uh, so that's why you take the Watchstone out here at that point. And then we get to uh, start completing the two Watchstone in the Hamlet. Uh, once you have nine Watchstones, you are just going to slap all of those nine, uh, extra four Watchstones straight back here. So you don't do that until you can put all four here. That's very important, because you don't want to put 3 here, because then it's going to eat from map drops from this area. So this is just now 3 plus 2 Awakening level. Very important. Again, there's that. Uh, and then you start, again, complete, like you're completing the uh, Hamlet stuff. Uh, after everything is done, you should have 10 Watchstones. Uh, but you're still missing 2 two way like two watchstone conqueror fights and that's where having the two watchstones here earlier might have had been useful because then you might have like one map here to kickstart it and then hopefully be able to run from there uh, and also while you're running uh, maps here I, i've said i'm not gonna say it but i'm gonna say it anyways if you drop tier 10 maps while farming uh this two watchstone area, you could potentially save those, and then, if nothing else, uh, you could go lower these maps a bit and go farm the harbingers or horizon orbs if you don't have those. Because remember the crimson township example of being a T10. Now you could use the the horizon orb in that T10 map from this region, and it will give you a T10 crimson township which you can use uh, for the progressing the two watchstone uh, fights there so that's a cool trick that i wasn't supposed to say but i can't help myself at least it's not mentioned here so that's good uh, and then uh, what am i saying here yeah so here 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 and yeah eventually there's there's also going to be a three watchstone fight in here so remember we did the zero watchstone now we're going to do two two watchstone and then we have one leftover three watchstone fight here which is going to be done here uh, and then the remaining three will be done here and if you can again ideally you would run all of those three rotations with three watchstones in there if you have the maps but since you have two watchstone fights there you could potentially be able to just run those. And after that, you're going to make your Atlas look like this. Mm -hmm. What was it again? 4-3, uh, 
Yeah, so Klenok, tier 4 here. So this is after you completed everything here, you take it out. Then you put tier here and tier here. So this is to maximize, again, maximizing the awakening level while trying to not eat into your map pool. And now the lowest tier map you have in your atlas, if we ignore like this one, uh, so it's 10 here, 10 here, and 14 here, if they are keeping with the same tiers that we used to. And here, the highest tier map is T5. So now T6, 7, 8, and 9 are all going to be not dropping, and they're accumulating towards the maps here. Now, if it looks like you're starting to run low maps, you could potentially take two watchstones out from here, and then just place them here. And now the lowest map that will ever drop for you is tier 8. And that is a way to like kind of save the save your map pool if you are starting to feel like okay, I'm going to run out of I'm going to run out of T10 maps and I don't have any T8 or 9 maps stored from uh, my farm from this this area. If you had those stored, you could put all of the forward stones here and then just run them. Uh, and that gives you a very high chance of getting uh, the maps here and here. And then in this setup, which we have here right now, uh, the goal is to complete the remaining remaining conquerors here and here. And whatever you end up getting all of the, the uh, missing conqueror fights done in, so let's say that we complete all of the Baldur's rest while we still have two Lyra conquerors to do, you just put one watchstone here. Uh, so that you remove this map from the drop pool and then you basically want to be finding maps from this area and it's going to be really nice because hopefully you did some of the maven stuff you only need to do two maven uh invitations for both of these for for this guy purpose at least uh the invasion monsters are i guarantee you they're going to be dropping you some nice t13 maybe t14 and 15 maps from running just like T10s and 11s here. So yeah, yeah, whatever region you complete little fights in first, make it for much stones. So you could be Klenak 4 again, Hammer to still 0, and then you have either Waldorf or Lyra at 4, and the other one at 3. Uh, and then once you hit 15 much stones, which is pretty, that's basically you're missing only one anymore. At that point, you're just gonna dump 4, 4, 4, and then three. And that way, literally the lowest map now is the T10 here. Or here, if you run maps in there. And then, after you have 16 watchstones, we get to this gray yard area that we don't know. Because there is about 0.0001% chance that GGG is going to put you against Awakener 8 after you completed three Watchstone Conquerors because the, the power leap between the monsters is like absolutely insane. So what I'm expecting to happen is that you have to complete a four Watchstone of each Conqueror um, and I think it doesn't, you can do them in any region that you, you care about, uh, that you want. And if it is so, you'll literally just do this. If you want to spawn the Cirrus the fastest, you do this. Uh, because that way, all of the high tier maps will be here. Uh, if it requires you to do a Conqueror on each of the region, then it just go full, uh, full uh, Atlas. Because you won't run out of maps that way, because every single map that will drop will be a 14. Unless you're running white maps and only kill the map boss, maybe then you might run out of maps. Um, and then you just do until you zero and boom, you're basically done. Now, in an ideally, you should be uh, completing some Maven bonuses as you go. Uh, I purposely left out like micromanaging your watchstones to gather maps for that, but there is stuff like that. If you're more interested about that, just come hit me up in on my stream and ask. I feel like people who ask are actually watch more like willing to learn and listen to it than or just watching a video so hopefully at least this pretty simple uh 
step-by-step -step guide despite being 25 minutes long is useful and like I mentioned at the start of the video anyways uh, I have the base pin if you don't want to watch the actual video but yeah hopefully this was useful and uh, best of luck with the uh, next start